We'd like, I'd like to discuss some of uh, our history. I recall when you were a chairperson of the California Senate Banking and Insurance Committee that uh, there was legislation, I was then insurance commissioner, we were trying to hold insurance agents accountable for their actions, that they owed to their customers their best uh, good faith effort and that they would always deal in the interest of their customers, not in their own personal interest, not in the interest of the insurance companies, but rather in the interest of their customers. That is one of the fundamental things that you described that was taken away in the mid-2000s so that the, as you were saying, the financial institutions no longer had any obligation to their customers, but rather to their bottom line. Is that the case? That's correct. So you have your agent uh, at um, your broker, I should say, at any one of the brokerage firms, and you think they're actually there trying to find good deals for you to invest in. What you don't know is that many of them are captive, much like in the insurance industry, where they only sell certain products. So you're not getting the panoply of opportunities that you deserve. And furthermore, you don't know what fees they're getting. They might be getting more fees if they sell this particular product, so they promote that product. Uh, and not other ones that may be safer um, and may be more inclined to provide you with the kind of security that you're looking for. There ought to be a law. There ought to be a law. There ought you're to be absolutely a law. right. There ought to be a law that holds these banks to the highest possible standard that they owe to their customers their best, op their best knowledge and information and that they don't double deal. It's the double dealing that's going on. That's what's uh, the current SEC lawsuit against the against Goldman Sachs. It's about double dealing. On the one hand, they're here. On the other hand, they're there. They're playing both sides. That cannot allow the cracks that you talked about there, particularly the, the Glass-Steagall um, repeal in 1991, really opened the door to not only the kinds of uh, terrible meltdown in, in the housing market and the collateralized mortgage obligations, but also the loss of trillions of dollars of value that people held in their assets, in their portfolios, in their 401ks, which we now know as 201ks, in their homes. We lost 8 million jobs as a direct result of Wall Street's double dealing, of their um, excesses of their extraordinary greed. Eight million jobs were lost. 2.8 million homes were foreclosed. Pensions fell by $28 billion and trillions of dollars of assets of value that families needed for their retirement, for their ongoing businesses, all blown away. It's time for us, it's time for America to reestablish the fundamental rules of the road that we had, as you said, since the 1930s, since the Great Depression. Clear laws were established that said, if you're an investment banker, all right. If you're a banker, all right. And if you're an insurance company, all right. But you cannot be all three. We've got to go back to those kinds of very strict regulations. Otherwise, this is going to happen again. We cannot depend upon the market to discipline itself. And in many respects, if the gentleman will yield, it's worse because you know, 10 years ago, there were probably 60 big banks. Today, there are only five. Because of this financial meltdown and the purchase by many of these banks of other banks, uh, they are now too big to fail unless we take steps to make sure that they are contributing to a resolution trust fund, uh, that there is the basis on which uh, if a systemically risky enterprise is deemed to be so by a council of uh, advisors, that that particular entity can, in fact, be made smaller. Uh, because right now we are, we can't say that nothing is too big to fail because they're all too big to fail right now. Well, exactly right. If the gentlewoman would yield back, uh, clearly we've got our, we've, the American financial institutions have worked themselves into a, situation that is that will continue the risk that brought down nearly brought down the world's financial institutions and brought the world into one of its 
most dangerous economic times since the Great Depression. So we need to move legislation. I know that you're a, a member of the Financial Services Committee here and that you worked long and hard uh, throughout the fall, summer and fall of last year to put together a comprehensive reform of the financial institutions, one that would rein in the excesses, one that would create transparency, one that uh, a reform that would create a consumer protection agency 